Shabbat Shalom. This week's Torah portion is titled Balak and is found in Numbers chapter 22, verse 2, through chapter 25, verse 9, Micah chapter 5, verse 6, through chapter 6, verse 8, Romans chapter 11, verse 25, through verse 32, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 20, through verse 31, and Psalms chapters 102 and 103. Like always, this portion was filled with plenty of goodies, but I want to first focus on Micah. We read in chapter 6 that the Lord has a complaint against his people Israel because she has gone astray. And in verse 3, he asks, O my people, what have I done to you? And how have I wearied you? Testify against me. In essence, what he's asking is, what did I do to make you turn away from me? He then begins to remind Israel who he is and what he has done for her. Now, skipping down to verse eight, he says, he has shown you, O man, what is good and what does the Lord require of you, but to do justly, to love mercy and to walk humbly with your God. I want to focus on those words to do justly. It is the Strong's number 4941 Mishpat, meaning act of deciding a case, process, procedure, litigation before judges, case, cause presented for judgment, time of judgment, ordinance, decision, right, privilege, do. We see not only is this definition talking about a time of judgment or judging matters as in legal proceedings, but following Yah's ordinances that he has given us his people. And I love how part of that definition says that it is a decision, a right and a privilege. Those words are so powerful when you really think about them. When you look up what it means for someone to have a right to something, it means that it's a power given to a person by a statute or other form of law and is legally enforceable claim held by that person. Yah's commandments and ways belong to his people. It is their right given to us by the power of his word. Now, what does it mean? What does a person gain this right? How do they gain this right? by specific events, transactions, which takes us to the other part of the definition, which is decision. We first have to decide how we want to live. Like Moses told our forefathers, today I put before you life and death. There is a decision to be made. Yah is not going to force anyone to choose him, but if we want his promises, we have to make the decision to believe and accept the free gift of salvation through Yeshua, which as Paul states in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 30, became for us wisdom for God and righteousness and sanctification and redemption. We have to walk out that life that is pleasing to him according to his standards and not our own. Which brings me to the last word in this definition, privilege. This can be looked at in a couple of ways. First, it is an honor to be chosen to be his. In John chapter 6, verse 44, Yeshua says, no one can come to me unless the father who sent me draws him. Paul reiterates this in chapter, um, in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, when he talks about Yah choosing certain people to spread his word to the nations. And again, we are reminded in Matthew that wide is the gate leading to death and destruction, and many will go through it. Whereas only, whereas uh, narrow is the gate leading to life and only a few will enter it. Another way to look at privilege is what it entails. With privilege comes certain things such as advantages, protection, exemption, and favor. And we see this in the story of the title of this tour portion, Balak. Balak, whose name just so happened to mean destruction, 
was a king of Moab who was afraid of the children of Israel because he heard how they defeated the Amorites and he feared the same would happen to his kingdom. So he called upon Balaam to curse Israel. Now, Balaam was not a part of Israel, but had been given a gift from Yah, although he used it for evil. And just a side note, this is an example of what Paul meant at Romans chapter 11, verse 29, when he stated, for the gifts of the calling of God are irrevocable. There may be many people in this world who have gifts of prophecy um, or healing or abilities to preach, but we have to be able to discern if they are truly of Yah or seducing spirits. We have to be careful not to be taken in by the gifts they use, but how they live their lives. So much mess is going on in the body of Christ right now, and so many people are being deceived and led away by seducing lips because there are infiltrators who appear to be godly but are on assignment to cause destruction. Now, going back, Balak wanted Balaam to use his power to curse Israel. But what happened? Yah said no. Why? Because Israel was privileged meaning Israel had an advantage over her enemies because she had favor, the favor of Yah upon her and was protected by him. We see this again when Yah was reminding his people about what he had done for her. He says in Micah chapter uh, 6 verse 5, O oh, my people, remember now what Balak king of Moab counseled and what Balaam the son of Beor answered him. Remember earlier, I mentioned that being Yah's people comes with certain rights. I can't help but think about the, that process in our own country of America. When a person wants to become an American citizen, they have to meet certain qualifications like living here for a certain amount of years or being married to a citizen. Uh, they have to have good moral character. They have to swear off all allegiances to foreign governments and be tested on American history and government. As citizens of Yah's kingdom, we too have to meet his qualifications and will be tested. Many times did Balak try to destroy Israel, but without success. We read in chapter 25, uh, verses 1 through 9, reads, now Israel remained in Acacia Grove, and the people began to commit harlotry with the women of Moab. They invited the people to the sacrifices of their gods, and the people ate and bowed down to their gods. So Israel was joined to Baal Peor, and the anger of the Lord was aroused against Israel. Then the Lord said to Moses, Take all the leaders of the people and hang the offenders before the Lord out in the sun that the fierce anger of the Lord may turn away from Israel. So Moses said to the judges of Israel, every one of you kill his men who were joined to Baal of Peor. And indeed, one of the children of Israel came and presented to his brethren a Midianite woman in the sight of Moses and in the sight of all the congregation of the children of Israel who were weeping at the door of the tabernacle of meeting. Now when Phinehas, the son of Eleazar, the son of Aaron, the priest, saw it, he rose from among the congregation and took a javelin in his hand. And he went after the man of Israel into the tent and thrust both of them through the man of Israel and the woman through her body. So the plague was stopped among the children of Israel. And those who died in the plague were 24,000. We see from this, Israel caused her own destruction by mixing with the very ungodly nation from whom she was protected against. Israel herself opened the door to her own destruction by turning against the laws and statutes of Yah. Like Israel, we too can be the culprit of our own demise by doing the opposite of what Yah has called us to do thus leaving the protection and favor provided by him. While testing may come, victory and success is always promised to us if and only we remain in him. Shabbat Shalom.